Today I'm at Siglo Restaurant, uh, which is a stone throw from the Silver Vaults, and I'm with John Walters, who's one of the experts from there. And we're at this wonderful table, uh, about to have uh, a dinner. And as you can see, we've got a fantastic array of silver, which John has kindly brought along. Uh, and with any dinner, for me especially, it was always important to have the correct decoration. And as you can see, we've got a, a great selection. So John, could you talk to us a little bit about what we've actually got here? Here we have a set of four candlesticks, which are made in 1788, which was the, uh, I believe actually was the year that Australia was founded. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they're in such incredible condition. They've even got their, yeah, uh, aren't they? their original mahogany turned bases on the bottom. The, the salt dishes as well. Well, these are, these are particularly interesting actually because we've got, actually we've got four of them actually on the table here. And one pair is made in 1750. Um, and then another pair has been made to match in, in uh, 1769 and 70. And I've actually got the original, original bill, I think, somewhere really? in my pocket. I sort of, See, something like that, the, you, you would think it had been lost long ago. Well, there was a, there was a company, a, f a firm of silversmiths who kept a record of all their, all their um, clients, and these actually belong to uh, Lord Lord Melbourne, who was wow. actually actually the father of uh, um, um, the pri prime minister, and they've all been engraved with Lord Melbourne's crests, and it actually says that on the bill, Lamb Melbourne Lord, date of order 20, 26th of March 1770, cost for a pair. Eleven pounds fifteen shillings. And the cutlery is this? Is it Georgian? Or yeah, it is Georgian. It's, it's actually quite a rare pattern. It's called. Um, it's actually the oldest, the oldest can, um, full canteen I've ever owned. Actually, it's all made in seventeen seventy eight, and it's got the original family crest on it. It's, and got it's a nice called, weight to it as well. It's called Feather Edge and Cartouche. I mean, sometimes in the nineteenth century inventories they call it a pattern called Carrington Shields, and the knives are actually nineteen sixty four. Really? The old, yep. The old knives for that would have been steel bladed and would have rusted yes. and, and pulled apart, you see, because mm -hmm. the knives are mm -hmm. hollow now. And in the old days, they used to fix it with tar or pitch and the old steel would have, you know, come out and worked loose and, and rusted. And the other thing uh, which you mentioned to me earlier on, which is, is interesting with the fox, in some countries they turn them upside well, down. Well, that's right. That's why these, interestingly, are what we call bottom mark. If I don't know you can sort of see the... It was just about this period in England where we were changing from this way round mm -hmm. to this way round. And of course, most people, if these were made, say, five, ten years earlier, the table would have almost certainly been laid back to front as it would today, as they mm -hmm. sometimes do in France, because the family crests would have been propped on, on the, the back. back. And then the hallmarks would have interfered with the, with the cresting. There was a theory that I, I, I was once told, and I, I love it, and I hope it is true, and you probably know the answer, that the reason you had to turn the fox around was because the, the, the old cuffs of the That's old That's right. It was would, one, would, of, would one of the Louis. One of the Louis, because I think the men had, um, they, they wore more um, adornment than the ladies in, clothes, those, in yes. those days. I mean, a guy like me would be wearing a lovely wig in those days. And Absolutely. You wouldn't be looking at me as a sort of bald-haired, middle-aged <laughs> man. So. <laughs> so. Another question you might know the answer to is why, why on earth do we now have um, Desert Cutlery up the top? What, what's made us suddenly move it? Um, we have obviously for a long time we had cutlery in a line. Do you think it's because the Victorians invented so much of it that they had to, yeah, they had to move? Yeah, probably. I mean, I, th I think the sort of number of pieces available mm. were, were getting larger and larger. I suppose the Victorian silversmiths were trying to sort of uh, find new ways of extracting money out of the public. I, I, you know. Well, you know, there was basically something for everything in the old days. But then if you look at things like, I mean, that's a basket, for example, from 1789. It's Irish, actually. It's made in Dublin. But it's, it's always has smart. a... If you, if you look at anything old, certainly, certainly before First World, First World War, or, it'll always have a handle. And despite what you see on these baking programmes, three-tier cake stands are not smart. Mm. That, that was regarded as that was regarded as uh, low end hotel culture, which has now been absorbed into sort of very smart baking programs. You see, if you were the butler, you would be cutting, bringing the cake or whatever cut from the kitchen from below stairs, and presenting it on a basket. So you'd be, you mm. wouldn't be ever like that. No, always have a handle. So all old cake baskets always have a handle for is that. Is that what that is, a cake basket? Cake basket, fruit basket, it would always have a handle. It's a fantastic selection that we've got in front of us. Budget-wise, because people will be looking at this thinking, 
can I afford that? Is it affordable today? This is probably the earliest flatware service that I, I could, uh, I've ever owned and this, I'm selling this for less than Harrods sell a new one for. It's, it's safe to say that if people are inspired and want to even come and have a look at what you've got then it's, it's worth popping along to the silver vaults. Come and, come and have a look, there's probably a better, better part of 30 dealers now and there. Well I think what I might do for Christmas, I might actually get um, the producer uh, to come down with me and I'll, I'll point out a couple of presents I'd like him to buy for my Christmas so that'll be me sorted. John, thank you very Excellent, much. Excellent, Rob. I look forward to seeing you. Thank you. Thank Thank you very much.